So hi everyone and I'm um, welcome Helen today as our guest speaker and she runs a Pilates studio um, and also does, um, is it supplements as well, is that correct? Uh, I, no, I do um, tropical skincare and executive with tropical skincare, so um, healthy skincare and makeup. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand her over because I've already messed up once. <laughs> for her to explain but today we're just going to generally talk about um healthy aging and just about our body and movement and everything because we're all going the way of um we've just been talking about like parents and different things that are happening to us so it's about keeping ourselves healthy today so we're just going to have a chat and see where that chat goes so if you want to introduce yourself helen and tell us what you do um that'd be great okay. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Hello, I'm um, very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so my name is Helen Conway and I run a Pilates studio based in Wrexham, North Wales. Um, we've had our studio, although not at this site, um, since 2002, and I've been teaching in the industry now for over 30 years. Um, and I started, as so many of us did, with aerobics and body conditioning and stair and stuff like that. And then at 18, so quite early on, had a disastrous ski accident that um, gave me a um, problematic knee for nearly 30 and had 27 surgeries on my right knee, culminating in a, um, a knee replacement um, when I was 46. So um, I was, I, I plowed on because you do, don't you? When you're young, you know, we're going to talk about healthy aging as we go through this, but when you're young, <laughs> the world's your oyster and you're invincible, aren't you? You know, yep. you know, it doesn't really matter what anybody says to you. It doesn't matter. You can get away with all sorts when, when you're young. Um, but by the time I got to about 22 and my knee was very troublesome, my doctor literally sat me down and said, if you do not change what you're doing, you will be in a wheelchair and at 22 you know if you if a, a modicum of sense then that resonates yeah so at that point I kind of thought well what do I do I either leave the fitness industry which I didn't want to do or I find another path and I was really fortunate that I came across Pilates at around about that time and so I started training in Pilates I've been training in it ever since um, I started teaching a classical um repertoire the classical repertoire so for those of you that, that know about pilates there is the classical repertoire and then there's a contemporary repertoire right and the classical repertoire essentially is the 34 movements that joseph pilates who um designed the whole program uh taught and you don't deviate from that 34 movement now there's there's modifications within it because it is quite a substantially difficult set of exercises, um, but all designed to improve mobility, to increase blood flow, to improve form, function, breathing. And so I started off teaching that. And when I look back now, I, I do wonder how some of my clients left the room still walking. <laughs> because, because they were older, I was younger, invincible. They were older and, um, and asking them to do some of the movements, which now, um, in modern thinking of those 34 movements, 28 of them are deemed unsuitable for today's oh, wow. job. Yeah. Because yeah. the population that we're dealing with now are very different to the population that Joseph was dealing with. Yeah. You know, 100 years ago, people didn't sit for eight hours in an office. No. They didn't drive an hour to go to work to sit for eight hours. They didn't drive an hour home to then sit on the sofa and watch the Olympics in the hope that fitness happened by osmosis you know I mean we're all, all experts now you know I'm now an expert on trampolining I'm an expert I plan to be an expert on speed climbing I'm really looking really forward to that um we're especially got, expert on diving and swimming at the moment because we're doing so well in that we're all armchair experts aren't we but this isn't who he spoke to you know and the people that he dealt with who were predominantly um dancers and gymnasts and were fairly fit anyway but even the general population they didn't live the the inflammatory lifestyle that we live they, now no, they never sat still did they no they, no, they, they walked everywhere you know children would walk 
if they went to school um, for the period of time they went to school, they didn't have a school on their corner that their children that they were dropped off at at the gate by their parents. Yeah. You know, they walked through all weathers, you know, to get that education for miles. Yeah. You know? And then they would come home and they would be an active member of the household. You know, they didn't then go and sit on their game consoles and stuff like this. So a very, very different population, a different diet, different mentality. Um, so, you know, is it, there's, it's not that there's anything wrong with those 34 exercises. Okay? Yeah. If you're the sort of person that Joseph dealt with in the first place, but most of us aren't. And I know that my clients definitely are not those people, you know. Yeah. My clients are predominantly getting older, as am I, you know. You know, we're all aging together. And so for me to ask them to, without using their hands, hold themselves up on their shoulders. Yeah. You know, when I don't know what's going on in their necks, because we all know that hitting the age of about 40, if you don't have degenerative changes, in the discs of your spine, including your neck, by the age of 40, then you're probably in a minority nowadays. Yeah. You know, but if it's not causing you problems, you don't get it x-rayed or scanned, yeah. you don't know. So I have this, I can't see into people's bodies, so I would rather take um, a different approach, take a more cautionary approach and a more functional approach. So my classes tend to be a little bit more anatomically and functionally led. I want people to be strong and stable and upright and balanced and independent in their own homes for as long as possible. That's my remit. You know, I never want any one of my clients to be one of those people that is helped up off a toilet by somebody on either side of them. If that doesn't put the fear of God into you, I don't know what will. Yeah. And we don't have any idea because it wasn't, um, it's only since last year and it was because um we were in lockdown and I was working I mean I work from home a big chunk of it anyway but majority of it's because we didn't leave the home and everything and I was sitting in front of the computer pushing the business and everything I had my slippers on mm -hmm. but I had my slippers on for a year yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I have it slight inner soles to keep my thing nothing major but by not having them, and I love work walking around like barefoot and everything, but having slippers and not walking 100% constantly yep. was not my hip. And sitting, yes. I slightly moved and my hip just went clunk. And like we were talking earlier, it wasn't the actual hip moving that was the problem. It was all the tendons and yep. the muscles yes. and the yep. tissues yep. that caused the pain. So they sent me for an x-ray and all I get back and you like, oh, you've got um, the start of arthritis. You start to go, I was like, not, I wasn't in major pain, but I was like, oh my God, because my mum's got crumbling arthritis and that's why she's had everything and her whole bones are crumbling. I'm like, oh, oh my God, this, I need to wake up and think about what I'm doing. But it did make me wake up, not just because of the arthritis, because that's what everyone's, if anyone has an x-ray, I mean, from 40 onwards, yeah. our bones are starting to go yeah. I'm no different to anyone else what it made me realize is I was doing things like yoga and stretching but I wasn't moving enough and I wasn't doing yeah. stuff I now put my inner souls in different shoes in the house because I'm realizing my life had changed it's just simple things isn't it but until yeah. it gets yeah, think about till something tweaks that's the yeah. problem so, you know, I, I have um, obviously quite a close relationship to several physios locally and you know their their knowledge of anatomy is is amazing it's all, yeah. it's all um, and but you know I do feel for them sometimes when you know and very often they'll then refer people through to us and it's fine and I'll you know I'll speak to them and I'll say you know how long did you have this problem before you went to see the physio and, uh, and they'll say oh god it was at least six months yeah and I go Okay, and, and what, and oh, she gave me some exercises, but they didn't work. Did you do them? Well, yeah. Well, that's a no then, isn't it? You know, if, if, if you start the sentence with, well, it's a yeah. no, it didn't do the exercises, and it doesn't happen by osmosis, you know, you cannot then go back and say to the physio, those exercises aren't working for me if you're not no. doing them. You know, the, whatever you did to create the issue in the at the time, and that might have been inactivity. Yeah. You know, like the inactivity, you did that consistently enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so, you know, just because somebody's asked you to do something specific and it might take a little bit of time, but you know, you let that fester for six months before going to see somebody. Yeah. If you didn't see them the day it happened, the yeah. first day you went, oh, my back's a bit fiddly. I think I'm going to go and get myself checked out. Yeah. Then there's a better chance for your physio to go, ah, yeah, you're just on the bones of doing this. Let's yeah. just, you know. But people don't. We don't. We're human, aren't we? We, we put things yeah. off and we think it gets better. We stick a plaster. We justify it. You know, I was like, well, I do my yoga. I, out, I go out cycling. I, you yeah. know, I'm moving. But I was also doing something. Out. I was sitting a lot more. You know, I wasn't getting up in between clients like yeah. before. I'm, you know, I was sitting in front of the computer nonstop over the lockdown because I was trying to push the business on a different side because I couldn't go and see the client. So yeah. I changed my life, you know, yeah. and that year had a huge knock on effect for me. You yeah. know, so getting like it is, I now I'm still having to do those exercises now to make sure it doesn't go back out and I need to keep it and strengthen it back up. And, and if it's affected us who are within the health, wellness and fitness industry, who understand anatomical movement and the impact of yeah. those changes of movement, how has it affected those people that were perhaps not so active before became even less active? Yeah. You know, there's the thing, isn't there? You know, you said before your mum's got crumbling bones. Has your mum always been quite active? Uh, no. <laughs> She, she, she was from that generation she didn't you know she, well she was active and out but she yes. didn't exercise yeah sorry she, no. she's a bit was a busy person um, okay. yeah but you know what? sometimes that's fine you know mm. it, it's about movement it doesn't about yeah. exercise per se it's about movement yeah you know, it's staying mobile it's staying upright it's walking to the bus it's you know rather yeah. than just getting in the car I swore when I first got my car very when I was much 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 younger um I swore that I would the car was going to be there for long journeys it was I wasn't going to go to the the local shop in it I was like that's ridiculous <laughs> it took about three minutes before that car became the yes. first port of call for any journey yes. you know we adapt so easily to things that make our life easier yeah that thing but you know activity is the key but being active so it might be that your mum maybe your mum didn't do exercise but maybe she walked into town when she went to do her shopping she might have got a bus or a taxi home to carry stuff but you know yeah. maybe she walked there and the difference you know when you start to put work into joints joints have a lifespan yeah you know for people they have a lifespan and but the you know, people often say to me, you know, oh, God, you know, if I hadn't been so active, I wouldn't have this problem with my joints. I know you probably have diabetes instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, and it, actually, it is. And we, uh, I was at the hospital um, with my son for his break. And that was one thing I didn't, I, I suppose I did know, but it was, you know, when you just get reminded something, the surgeon said to us that sitting still does not heal your bones. No movement actually makes them bond and re to make the uh, break. It yeah. will help, but the more movement you do, the more. And it is. It's when you think about it, it's like that's so obvious, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Um. But he's saying to him, "Do not sit still." I mean, no, it was great. He needed to hear that. Um. You know. But it is. It's like we need that movement for the body generally, isn't it? Um, yeah. Well, I have this a lot because I teach a lot of balance in my classes. I'm a bit obsessed, to be honest with it, because a lot of my, uh, certainly my, my private clients are older. I deal a, a lot with our frailer, older um, clients. So, <clears throat> and balance is a big issue because, you know, if they can't maintain their balance, then the likelihood is they're going to end up flat on their face at some point, And then yeah. how do they get back up again? But balance and it drives a bit of a I'm on one now, bit of a bugbear. Um, I see people teaching balance and they get people to stand on one leg, yoga block on their head, and they're oh, look at this. And then they they video it to social media. Like, oh, we worked on balance in class today. Well, actually, you didn't you? You worked on standing still, and yeah. that's not the same thing. Balance is about recovering from your wobbles. Yeah. So that thing when you slip on ice in the winter and you do that weird little funny dance, 
to try and stay upright. That's your brain, your center of gravity, your GPS system going, where's my head, where's my shoulders, where's my hips, where's my knees, where's my ribs, where's my feet. Yeah. All trains. And so it's the recovery from wobbling that is key. Yeah. So when you, so this to anybody who's listening, if you need to work on your balance, then stand. And if you need to, fingertip touch against a wall or a counter surface. Don't hold on to anything because you probably don't need to hold on. But that little fingertip touch is all you need for the message to go to your brain to say, I'm safe. Yeah. Okay. So, and then maybe lift a leg up, find strength in the standing leg, and then start moving the other leg around and turn your head because that's how you walk. You don't walk like you've got a book on your head, never moving your gaze only in a linear line. And then when you want to turn a corner, do you turn a sharp corner and then go that way? You don't, do you? No. You you have, you're wandering around, you're looking, you're off center, you're tripping over things. It's that sort of balance. That's the functional balance we need. And that's what we need if we're going to age well. Yeah. But I, I, there's a caveat to that. What I would say is standing on one leg for one minute improves bone density in the hip joint more than running for 52 minutes. Wow. Yeah, I know. Say that again. So standing on one leg for one minute increases bone density within the hip joint more than running for 52 minutes. Wow. Okay. I know. Fun fact. Yeah. They, um, so I'm not saying don't do that. You know, do that every day, one minute, maybe when you clean your teeth. You yeah. know, so stand on one leg for one minute, stand on the other leg for one minute, and that's it. And that's all you need in terms of static balance. Okay. Other than that, you want your balance to be fluid and dynamic and challenging. Okay. Um, if you're going to get the best out of it. Yeah. Because the brain, um, it's the brain, isn't it? The balance part in the brain yeah. as well, as much as the joint. Um, if that's not coping with things moving. Yeah. And it is, it's a use it or lose it skill. Yeah. And if we work on it now, so regardless of how old your membership group is that's watching now, you know, you may have some younger, you may have some older, it doesn't matter, you know, start now so that when balance becomes a real issue to you, um, as you get older, it's not an issue. Yeah. It's, the, yeah. it's something you've just kept up, you know. And, so when uh, the knee isn't, or the hip or whatever we're having problems with, isn't feeling great, the rest of the body can cope better yeah. isn't it so we're just yeah. maintaining it so because yeah. something is going to go out I mean you had a problem yeah. from young I had um you beat me with the mount I had 12 ops on my knee when I was in the space of two years um from 15 to 17 wow. yeah. um I then just had a car accident at 19 and hit the head so <laughs> mine just <Wow>. moved. but <laughs> um so you know, it doesn't matter how young you are to how old, you know, we all know that there's going to be issues and different things and, you know, things of, you know, having operations or not even having ops, we're going to get joint problems, we're going to get shoulder, like you said, how we've been sitting or. Yeah. Doing. And also remember that any operation, small or large, is a traumatic event to the body yeah. and you have to give yourself time to recover from that again when you're young you tend to want to bounce back and when you're old you perhaps you're a little bit more sensible sometimes too sensible I have you know obviously because I've had a knee replacement and had a lot of surgery on my knee I'm the kind of the go-to girl for knees so yeah. anybody has a problem with the knee oh go see Helen she'll sort you out yeah <laughs> um but the number of people I see that come in following a joint replacement and particularly a knee because initially you're told not to kneel on it well, that's pretty obvious because it's so ruddy painful. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't want to kneel on it. Yeah. And, uh, but what they don't do, and as I said to you earlier, you know, certainly in my area, you get one post-operative appointment. Now, at the end of 12 months, when you get your first post-operative appointment, I still didn't want to kneel on my knee. It was still painful, you know. Yeah. Um, but at that point, nobody then says to you, but don't worry because you will be able so that people leave never having been told anything other than don't kneel on your knee yeah. and I get people back you know and very often it's someone that says will you have a chat with me mum or me dad they've had a knee replacement seven years ago and they're still struggling and I think why are they still struggling seven years 
on over and I'll say okay you're no problem and I come in and I'll say so tell me you know what do you do are you able to kneel on? no no I was told not to kneel on it yeah not for forever <laughs> know once it once the pain goes once the swelling goes yeah. down and you start to work it properly you know you're supposed to treat it like an ordinary joint yeah but they don't and they're really scared so the first thing i do is i get into meal on it and i say how does that feel and they go a bit uncomfortable i said you'll get used to it yeah you know is it painful or is it uncomfortable it's uncomfortable well we can live with that yeah you know so very often people are confused because they don't get all the information they need because appointments with consultants and physios are are short yeah you know and also you only know what you know you don't know what you don't know you know that's what we were talking about isn't it it's about and like this is what part of the membership is it's giving as much knowledge to people so they can understand different things or know where to turn to to get that knowledge Um, if you don't know what you don't know you don't know what questions to ask yeah. So it's not obvious for somebody to say, once they've been told, don't kneel on your knee. Nobody says, for how long? Yeah. Because you don't know. And of course, we assume, understandably and not unreasonably, that these people know more than we do. Yeah. And you if know. you haven't got a, um, you know, this goes into a lot of the other stuff, if you haven't got a goal or something to get to, so if it's not like, well, my job, I need to kneel, how quick can I get back to kneeling because I need to get back to work? Yeah. You don't even think of that. You just yeah. take in that information and walk away because, you know, and for some people going to the hospital and seeing that, it's you know, well it is, yeah. Um, and, you know, and if you've waited a long time, like waiting for your appointment and, you know, you're getting in there, you know, it's a great idea to write a load of questions down, isn't it? And also, I would say, and again, I'm speaking to your membership group directly here. If you have to go and see a consultant about something, OK, and that might be pelvic floor, it might be knees, backs, necks. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, find somebody who has had something similar and ask their experience and ask them what questions they wish they'd asked. Yes. When you were in there, you know, and the consultant says to you, have you got any questions? You know, immediately you go, um, no, I don't think so. No, that's great. No, that's, no, I don't think so. It's fine. No, that's lovely. Thanks. Because, you know, partly because we want to be polite and we don't want to take anybody's time. Um, but, you know, afterwards, you always walk out going, oh, I should have, oh, my friend, oh, I wonder what happens if. Yes. So find somebody who's in a similar situation. And if you're on Facebook, <laughs> if you're on Facebook or social media, you know, just put a little plea out. Anybody ever dealt with such and such? And you'll be deluged with people who want to share their experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you know and if it's something a little bit more personal like pelvic floor issues loads of pelvic floor pages you can go into where you know people talk very openly about their issues right you know, so please there is absolutely no reason to sit in silence you know and there are some really really good really good people out there that is, there's, that's definitely something i mean we all joke about it and laugh and men are a lot more like oh we've got to get up and go to the loo a lot more you know um and it does sometimes affect men it, well that's not true but you know it's a bit more apparent but you know you do with age you notice you're starting to like i mean comedians talk about it isn't it in your 20s you can walk around get up and make your cup of tea and then decide you need the loo i mean yeah, as you get older yeah. and i mean i'm only in my 40s and i'm still like i wake up and i go oh god i need the loo <laughs> it's like i didn't realize it was coming this quick <laughs> well i i i mean i'm 53 now and i've had i've never had children and it would appear i have sailed through menopause oh you know? lucky thing <laughs> Yeah, I know, nothing, nothing, not a heart flush. Not, my husband might suggest that I've got some temper issues, but I don't think that that's any different to what I've always been like. So, um, but, um, but no, I've, I've been very, very fortunate. My mum went through a terrible menopause. I, I have not, I've been very lucky. Um, but I have a lot of friends who have made this their thing now, you know, yeah. a couple of people particularly who are, are exceptionally good at this and they've had their own issues. So I've never had children, which is really, really traumatic for the pelvic floor, particularly a vaginal birth, never mind a, a cesarean, vaginal birth, 
God, it was like pushing a bowling ball through the eye of a needle. Terrible. <laughs> um, and very often not given all the advice you need to heal well. Yeah. You know, um, but um, so, and, and, I, and I appear to have sell through menopause. I'm carrying a little bit of extra weight. Lockdown's been pretty generous, I've got to be honest. So my bum's a bit bigger than it was, um, but not massively so. So I don't think... I don't think I've had many um, issues that have heavily impacted my pelvic floor. Right. Now, obviously, for women who have, then finding the right help is crucial. Please, please, please don't suffer in silence. There is no reason. If you leak when you laugh, you cough, you sneeze, if you stop doing the things you love doing because you leak when you do them, okay, please go and get some help. Find some advice. Go and see your GP. Get referred to a women's health physio. Um, there aren't that many around, but they're starting to become more prevalent. Um, you know, find those people. Look up, if you're on social media, look up Helen Tight. Okay. Um, and she has a group called Menopause Muse, M-U-S-E, Menopause Muse. And she's exceptional. And she has gone through surgical trauma for her prolapses and all the rest of it. And she is so completely open. Nicest woman you will ever, ever come across um, but completely open to being to helping women you know healthy age again but her thing really is menopause and the impact of menopause there's absolutely no reason but you only have to go into any supermarket now to see what big business adult nappies are yeah you know and then and ex there's exercises and pelvic stuff you can do absolutely. isn't it so you don't have to turn to the tablets and the no, I mean, but also <clears throat> remember that pelvic floor issues can be a too tight a pelvic floor, not too relaxed a pelvic floor. So it's important that you find out what your issue might be. Yeah. As, um, but don't suffer in silence. I, it, I, it, it makes me really sad yeah. when I hear women, um, men don't talk about it quite so much, although it does affect them, as you say. And I think it's that um, it's a lot of, and I hear this a lot from my clients um, when I'm working with them. So many people go, "Oh, well, I have that, but that's just my age." Oh no! It's no, gone into their head, yeah. isn't it? That, yeah, that it's my age, so I just need to put up with it. It's like, no, you don't. You know, you shouldn't be putting up with this. <laughs> you know what? Grey hair is your age, but how many people dye it? Yeah, it's no different. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah, no, me too. Um, it's no different, you know. If you don't like the impact of age, change it. Yeah, change it. There's something that can be done, and don't be fobbed off by a male doctor. Yeah. Okay. So never, you know, never. I've got uh, clients, you know, slightly different thing, but I've got some clients with MS, and the first thing I say to them when they have any issues is, "Do not let them say, oh, it'll be your MS." Yeah. Because that's their first port of call. Ah, well, yeah, it's probably your MS. Ah, yeah, but it might not be. Yeah. yeah. So please, 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 go and get help. Get advice. Speak to people. And you will be amazed. You sit down in, with a cup of tea and a nice big cake. Everybody relaxes over a big cake, don't they? So get a big squashy cake in. Throw on the kettle. Get all your girlfriends around and ask for a show of hands how many of them pee when they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I tell you, 90% of them will do that. Yeah. But up until then, it's been a big secret and it's not a secret. And, you know, and the thing that really makes me sad is when I see young women doing things like CrossFit and trampolining. And, and certainly in CrossFit, it's like a badge of honour when they when they pee, when they lift. It's like, and I think that's not how the human body is supposed to work. No. You know, so if you haven't got a pelvic floor like a bulldog clip ladies get on it <laughs> <laughs> so really the whole moral of this thing today is just like a if something's going wrong get it sorted as quick as possible b yeah. do move exercise do strength exercises because it helps Absolutely. us keep going you know, the longer we leave stuff, the more problems we have later on, strength, isn't it? Strength training for women as they age is crucial. It's absolutely crucial. 
pick up the weights, pick up the water bottles, pick up the tins of beans and do some strength training. You will not build massive muscle. You're just not made to do that. You know, 95% of the people in the world who automatically build a lot of muscle are men. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and and quite often they need a little bit of chemical help for that. So, you know, don't be afraid of weights. Don't be afraid of getting and resistance bands. You know, get a resistance band. They're as good as any weight that you yeah, might have. They're brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, they're fantastic. They take up no space at all. Look after them; they'll last you a few years, and they're very cheap. You know, they're portable. Go away on holiday. Take them with you. You yeah. know, do your back fills, Do your tricep extensions. Do your back extensions. Do the work now. That's going to make life when you get older so much easier. Yeah. Because you know, the rate at which we are developing as a nation, osteoporosis, diabetes, is going to bankrupt the NHS. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, it, it, it's, they're estimating now that diabetes is costing the NHS a billion pounds a year. It's yeah. unsustainable. And if you have type 2 diabetes and are taking tablets, you 99.9% of the time can change that just with yes. lifestyle changes. And that's generally switching your diet around a little bit, a bit more plant and, and whole foods and doing a bit more activity. And yes. that's it. You know, you're not asking for enormous changes, just little tweaks here and there. And 99% of the time, you'll be off those tablets and you will not be diabetic anymore. But I promise you, if you don't and you end up going on to insulin, there's no way back from insulin yeah there's no way back it is it is even as the older we're getting if we're not being overactive our whole life it's just getting out and moving isn't it being active yeah again go back to what we said before it's not about exercising if exercising isn't your thing then that's fine no you know but everybody has an activity they like so if your activity is dancing around in the kitchen while you wait for the kettle to boil then that's fine you know do that several times a day you know Go upstairs, uh, you know, and uh, safety being the key here. But if you need to go upstairs, go upstairs, come down, go back up again to whatever you were going up for in the first place. Yeah. Okay. My favorite thing, do three squats before you sit down. So when you go to sit down, stand back up again, do it three times and then sit down. Whether that's the toilet, that'll work your pelvic floor, let yeah. hang on. Um whether it's the sofa, whether it's a dining chair, do three squats before you sit down. You'd be amazed how many squats you get in during the course of a day. That is a brilliant idea. Yeah. You know, it's like squats while you're cleaning your teeth. What else are you going to do while you're cleaning your teeth? I know. You know, you're, the, you're meant to do it, aren't you, for the two minutes. Like you said, you do one minute on one leg, one minute on the other. Yeah. You've cleaned your teeth because otherwise you cut it short, don't we? So we're, yeah. we're tackling everything here. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> You haven't had to plug into your diary a workout time. No. You've done it during the course of the day by being active, mm-hmm. you know. So, But remember also, standing all day long is no better for you than sitting all day long. Yeah. It's about variations. Yeah. It's about variations. It is. But it's as, as that you movement, said, isn't it? Exactly. But as you said, if you feel something isn't right, Trust your gut and get it looked at sooner rather than later. Don't wait. We all know that waiting times now are very long. Yeah. Get yourself on the ladder now because that waiting time is substantial. Yeah. So, you know, just get it, get it sorted straight away. Don't wait. And also, and I'm not saying I know everyone can't afford this, but if you're in the UK because not all my people are in the UK but if you're in the UK and there is months and the physios and things that there is a months and months just to get a phone call before even an appointment don't feel you have to wait or wait for a doctor to come back just <laughs> afford it go and see someone it's if it's you know if it is like you Pilates go and get someone that might then say oh you need to see someone talk to a physio, talk to a chiropractor, whatever it is, go and see something and get it sorted because you can make a huge difference in that time 
yeah. and then you won't have so many so much problems and you maybe only needed one or two treatments to get it because you've caught it quick enough isn't it that that's exactly it you know you speak to any physio any chiropractor any osteopath and ask them what they'd rather see would they rather see somebody in an acute phase yeah. where you know three four sessions might sort them out or would they rather see somebody who has had a who now has a chronic injury that's going to take months and months of treatment. Now, financially, yeah. you know, it's great for them when people leave it. They'd rather see people when it happens yeah. because they can catch it and they can stop it. And actually, what you should do, and again, I understand there's a financial implication, but you know what? And I'm not saying this is necessarily your people because I suspect I suspect that people who are in your health membership group are not these people. But I stood behind somebody in the supermarket yesterday and she bought two packets of bags and it was 19 pounds yeah. for 40, 40 cigarettes. And she'll, you know, I don't know her, you know, I could be doing a huge disservice, but she might smoke those in one day for yeah. all I know. That's 20 quid in a day. Mm. That's a like hundred odd pounds a week. You yeah. know, you could get two, three private appointments with a physio or a chiropractor for that. Yeah. The other thing is, top tip, probably more for the people in, in the UK, go onto the discount sites, go onto Groupon, go onto Woucher and see if anybody in your local area is doing an, a, a, a first time deal. Half yeah. price, go and see them. You know? Yeah, there is plenty of things and even a lot of people, if you go to them and you financially can't think, if you're honest and talk to somebody, they will help you out and sort something out. I know I do yes. with my clients if they're in that situation. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you, there's a lot of option and I know we always think we shouldn't or we're just waiting. Or if I do a bit more stretching, it's going to feel better. Just go and get it looked at because as we're aging, isn't it? And, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are, but as you age, things take longer, things I think, and the more we can get on top of it. I would, I would say on that point as well, for those of you that think that stretching is the, is the, the, the be all and end all to, to releasing something tight. There's now a big movement against stretching. We're now moving into somatic movement. Yes. Yeah. Um, and also, if you think about stretching, like taking an elastic band, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got an elastic band and it's pretty cold. It's been on the window ledge in the winter overnight and it's a bit tight and you pull it, okay? And then you let it go. It goes back to exactly where it was. Yeah. And the only time you get more give in that elastic band is when it starts to degrade. Yes, it starts crumbling, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So if whatever you're doing is creating a tightness, or maybe you're just born that way, you yeah. know, you don't actually have to do anything wrong to have tight muscles or tight tissue. You know, it, you could just be one of those inflexible people. That's just what God's given you and you have to work with it. Okay, but if you're trying to stretch something that isn't made to stretch any further, it's just going to go back to where it was. You're wasting your time. Yeah, you're wasting your time. So think less about trying to stretch everything out, thinking it's going to fix everything. When in reality, it's probably not. It might feel nice, and if it feels nice, do it. But if it's if you're doing it because you want to affect a big change. You're very possibly wasting your time. Yeah. But if it feels nice, do it. You know? And it is, it's more about a line in the body, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because when something's out, it's always going to be hurting and pulling on something else. And yeah. until you align the whole thing, you know. Um, I mean, posture is a perfect example of that, isn't it? You know, if I, if I get a client in who comes in like this, okay, and I'm going to work on their posture, then I'm going to ask them, and bring them to this, if they go back to doing that the moment they leave the door, yeah. then every single time I'm gonna to have to yeah. do this with them. You know, so we're going over the same ground over and over and over again because their body now thinks that that is, normal. is their best. That's normal. Yeah. And the effort that it takes to change that is significant you know we we shouldn't underestimate how difficult it is to lengthen shortened muscles and to shorten lengthened muscles so, yeah. but at this they've gained nothing so they're they're long and weak at the back they're short and weak at the front they've probably got a neck issue because they have to do that to look forward um so nothing's changed so 
changing things happens over a long period of time. You yeah. know, you have to expect at least three months before you start seeing this. So if you get exercises from your health, fitness, wellness professional, do them. Just do the exercises. <laughs> because they don't work when you just read the paper. <laughs> It doesn't happen like that. Oh, I wish it did. I would be, I would be an Olympic gymnast if that's the case. Yeah, see, you wouldn't be sitting here talking to us, you'd be in Japan. Oh, I would, yes, I would. I'd be marvellous just, just because I'd watched enough of them do it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know whether anybody else has, has anybody else looked at uh, anything they've done and gone, oh, I could do that and nearly put something out. <laughs> And that's when you know they're really good because they make it look really, really easy. <laughs> so my son was saying that there should be a program of normal people trying to do <laughs> the Olympics. So we actually really realise how much effort goes in because we're all so quick to go, oh, they didn't do that very well, did they? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Not everything they do so punishing on the body and when you see and you see big people like oh i don't know the cyclists you know the cyclists yeah. you know cycling flat out for six hours yeah you know and you think well you know there's the portion of the brain that we have that goes you have to stop now because this is bad for you yeah you know it's affecting your vision it's affecting your cognitive thinking it's affecting your breathing it's you know that bit that makes us go i'm done yeah <laughs> they just completely ignore they're superhuman these people which is why it bugs the life out of me when i hear people um i mean simone biles is an absolute perfect example the number of middle-aged men who can't do a cartwheel <laughs> who are giving her the bells of shannon for pulling out because of her mental health yeah you know, you try and do what she's done. She's a bit, she's a, a survivor of sexual abuse. Yeah. There's now somebody on the American team who has been accused of, of sexual abuse by six women and is being held separately to them so he doesn't interact with them. It's one of her teammates. You know, she, you know, she's, she had the weight of the world on it. I mean, even I, even I said to my husband, oh, I can't wait to see what Simone Biles does. She's yeah. not even on the team. You know? <laughs> You know, and the media has been really, really on her saying how wonderful she is and she's perfect. Yes. And, yeah. you know, it when none of us are perfect, I mean, we talk about this a lot or I talk about it a lot that, you know, we're not meant to be perfect. We're not right. meant to be 100 percent. So, you know, those pressures are huge, isn't it? Yeah. And that yeah. brings us back to the whole thing, isn't it? Of like it takes months because it doesn't happen straight away and it's not perfect and we don't do yeah. it right and we will forget to do our exercises but it's Absolutely, about yeah. it's about going oh I forgot that I need to do them not oh I forgot that I won't bother anymore exactly that's a little bit like dropping your phone on the floor yeah. and then smashing it with a hammer because it didn't break first time isn't it yeah you know, you drop your phone on the floor and you pick it up and you dust it off and go, Phew, that's lucky. I won't do that again. Yeah. You know, but you don't. It's like, you know, and again, it, it ties in with diet as well. See this a lot with diet. You know, nobody has a bad day. You know, it's like, oh, I had a really bad day with my diet. Well, did you or did you just have a relaxed day? Did you have a yeah. relaxed day? Did you eat the things you really wanted? But actually, would it benefit you now to eat a bit more greenery? Yeah. When I. When I go away, because we have a, a, a caravan in Snowdonia and I do a lot of walking and swimming and um, kayaking and paddleboarding. And my husband does none of those things. Um, and so very often I'll go away and I'll, I'll, I'll have a few days away. And, I, and the last thing I say to him when they leave the house is eat something green. <laughs> and I'll get back and I'll say, did you eat anything green? And he'll say, I had an apple. What, in four days? In four days? <laughs> So, you know, it isn't, you know, just one bad day of anything does not define who the you rest are. Of, yeah. who, of, of your life and who you are and what you do and what you achieve. So you, you just get on and, and you know what, and learn to live with, with the disappointments that you, you bring on yourself. If you're disappointed that you had a really bad day yesterday because you didn't exercise or you ate really badly or quite frankly, you didn't even get up and shower, you know, yeah. whatever it is then okay then you know can you change that yep 
no, you can't. You can't change that day, but you can change this day. You know, so uh, there's a great book um, and it's called, oh my gosh, oh, it was right there, Tip Tongue, hang on, it's one of my favourite books as well. Oh, oh, I might have to send you the information. Anyway, yeah. it's about doing the small things. And um, it's a fantastic book. Oh, and I'll remember the moment we come off this call, by the way. Um, and essentially, it's that. It's, you know, just do something every day. If I ate a burger today, I'm vegan, by the way, so that's not going to happen. But if I ate a big, fat, filthy burger today, is that going to kill me? No. No? No, it's not? Okay. But if I ate a burger every single day for the rest of my life, is that likely to have an impact? Yeah, it's going yeah. to Exactly. Yeah. So it's not what you do today. It's what you do in the long run. And, and we peak and we trough. You know, yeah. we have great days and we have poor days. And, you know, live with the disappointment of those poor days and put them to one side and get on with it. You know, we disappoint ourselves all the time. We constantly disappoint other people. There's not a lot we can do about that. We just have to do what we can do. And some days are easier than others. Yeah. And, you know, and you do what you can do and you make the best of what you can, you can make the best of. So, um, yeah, little things, just little things, consistency all the time. That's all it needs to be. A little bit of consistency. So if you didn't do your exercises yesterday, well, do them today. It doesn't mean you say you have to double up on them today because overdoing it is no better for you than underdoing it. No. Just do them. And the less we do, and the, like if we don't do it one day and then don't do it the next, it becomes a negative thought yes. and then that that you just go down and when you have oh, I, my members will hear me saying this and when you have your negative thoughts it shuts down the uh, frontal lobe which is your action so yep. one simple negative thought can have a huge knock-on effect Absolutely. and I've yeah. read a book and I can't tell you the name of it because it was years <laughs> oh, ago <my> <laughs> We're doing really well for our mem my members today, aren't I? Um, and they always said, and it always made me think, it's like, if you keep walking past and going, I need to change that light bulb, and then not doing it, and I need to change that light bulb, because you haven't done that one simple little thing, it's yeah. um, it has a knock-on effect, because then you don't do the next, and you don't do the next. If you change the light bulb, you've achieved one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And if that's all you've done, but it yeah. gives you, oh, well, I can do the next thing. It's not now the next day I need to do the light bulb and the, 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 the you know, it's not adding yeah. up. And what it's I would say, the, what, the things that I say to my, excuse me, looking down, I'm just looking on my Audible to see if I've actually got, an, got it on Audible. I can, um, you send me the information and I'll put it into the... Yeah, I haven't. No. OK, yeah, I will. I've got the book at home. Um, yeah. So what I would say is um, the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, you may already say this to your clients. But this is what I say to my clients. Wake up in the morning before you switch on the news, before you go into social media, before you do anything else. Just lie there. See how you feel. You know, is everything still working? Do your toes still work? Do your, still work? Do your shoulders feel OK? How did you feel? Just how do you feel? And then what kind of a day do you want? Yeah. What kind of a day do you want? Yeah. Do you want a positive, uplifted day? You know, you've not even looked out the window, so you don't know what the weather's like, so that can't affect you. But what kind of a day do you want? Set your intention for the day. Yeah. You know, is it going to be a positive day? Is it going to be a funny day? Are you going to seek out a friend? Are you going to go, you're going to be productive? What kind of day is it? So set your intention for the day. And then you're more inclined and more likely to achieve it. Um, and I was going to say something else, and I can't remember what I was going to say. Ah, there it was gone. It's like mist, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, it might come back to me, but that's the first it's thing. It's your I menopause. Think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with my menopause, I'll have nothing bad said about my menopause. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely set set your intention for the day. Yeah. And, and and you know put to one side anything that that didn't go right the day before because you can't change that no you know? and you try just to change the, the, this day isn't it yes yeah. try to avoid those conversations you know those conversations of, of of yesteryear you know the baggage that we carry around with us try to just let it go you know if you've really if you've got 
something that constantly comes back to you, a conversation you had with somebody, or a conversation you think you should have had with somebody, well, you've, you've a couple of, well, you've three options really, haven't you? You can either carry on doing exactly what you're doing and just replaying it and replaying it and replaying it and replaying it. Oh, the energy you expend yeah. on that. Or you can write them a letter. Yeah. Now, whether you send that letter or not, is another thing, yeah. Is another thing, you know. Or you can pick up the phone and you can speak to them. Yeah. And would that put that to bed? And it might not be a pleasant letter. It might not be a pleasant phone call. It might be that you, you know, it's it's um, a friend or a family member. You know, we all know we can we can struggle with our families, don't we? They're not necessarily the friends we would choose to have. Yeah. But if you have a really fractious relationship with your mum or with your sister or whoever it might be, maybe, maybe it's time for you to say, this is not healthy for either of us. Yeah. And you'll always be my mum and for that I will always love you and thank you for making me the person I am. However, I'm stepping away. Yeah. Because sometimes that's the healthiest thing to do. Yeah. For both of you, because if you're running through conversations all the time, then they probably are as well. Yeah. You know? So sometimes you have to have these hard, make these hard decisions. Know that friendships, be they, be they family or friends, friendships run their course sometimes. Yeah. And they how do, they react is there, is, is there, there you not can't yours. Affect. You yeah. have to make your choice and your... And you have to do the things that are healthy for you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and, and if that means you have to have that difficult conversation, if that means that sometimes you have to walk away from things, don't stay with unhealthy relationships because out of loyalty. No, and then sometimes when we release things like that, things in our body release as well, because I'm a big believer of oh, emotional I courses because in physical. So, yeah. you know, it's working the two alongside each other. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. it's if they're a physical they are a physical when they've gone that far and you have to deal with the physical and we have to fix yeah. it we have to build our muscles but if we you know have these other things as well they can also cause us a lot of problems of moving exactly. forward yeah. and I also think that as we age we have the right to do that as well yes you know as we get older we have the right to choose who and what we have in our lives yeah because you know, at some point, we don't have a lot of time left. No, and you want your time to be, you know, around yeah. the people that are making you happy and joyful. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. So sometimes there's hard decisions to be made, but I would urge people to do that. Mm. It will really hurt at the time. And you'll cry. And yeah. that's fine. But sometimes you do just have to walk away from friendships, be they family or friends, walk away from that sort of stuff. It's just not good for you. Yeah. That is a great place to end because we have been chatting away for ages. <laughs> yeah. I will send you that book and you can pass it. It's a fab book. Um, it's also, you can also get it on audio um, CD as well. So I have the CD in the car as well. I love listening to books in the car. Um, you can get a whole load of learning done um, in the car while you're just driving along. It's, it's fab. Yes, yes. I actually just had a conversation with someone about that last night with my, uh, the book that I'm launching. And they're saying, uh, you know, I need to get it onto audio yeah. because the self-help books everybody listens Absolutely. in the car and I was like oh yes <laughs> it's the so, best I, I do so much more of my um my taking in my absorbing yeah. in the car than I do sitting down because you know again sometimes you can feel a little bit guilty sitting down and reading yeah so Actually, you're driving you're driving you know so yeah so definitely brilliant well thank you so much this has been great there's been some great things um well I hope been helpful i hope it's been interesting and i hope everybody remains well and active and you know get those niggles sorted out yes thank you and thank you for joining us it's been really good no problem at all you're more than welcome all right then bye bye bye